Hello, everyone, and welcome to another riveting edition of Under the Floorboards, where we laugh with the creatures that go bump of the night. I am your host, John, joined as always, not this week, by my co-host, Eric, but an equivocally beautiful guest, the one and only writer, director, drummer as well, correct? Yep, drummer. Drummer extraordinaire, the one and only Ethan Henry. How are you doing today, brother? What's going on, man? How you doing? Good, man. Good. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Uh, So... We got some stuff to cover today. Uh, really excited. I got to watch the trailer, which congratulations on the amount of views that Severance Mountain has got. Uh, I think you're over like 45,000 or something like that from the uh, production company's page on YouTube, right? Yeah. So the production company is actually my company. And uh, we just we just keep putting money into advertisement through YouTube and stuff. And we're just pumping it and uh you know people are like oh you should buy views i'm like no nah, i want this to be real because i it's my movie it's my company i invested in this and i want real people watching it so that way i can uh, have potential real buyers yeah right exactly so th- this yeah. is not uh necessarily your directorial debut correct i saw that you had actually done a pilot episode uh for another project as well correct yeah i mean i've i've done a few different little uh um like um proofs of concepts i mean i made some movies a long time ago with some buddies i mean back when we were uh maybe half in the bag who knows i mean some of it one of one time i made a movie because someone told me you couldn't make a movie without a script and so me and my friend so yeah you want fucking see it so we we made <laughs> a cool concept of a movie but a really bad movie and uh and we stayed up and after our, fa- our our girlfriends and families went to bed we filmed in the middle of the night until three four in the morning and i just edited together this really uh really rough kind of film but yeah this is my first movie i i took um i took to the end where i needed to complete something i needed to put something out to say hey i'm a movie maker i'm a writer i'm a director i'm a filmmaker and uh this was the movie that we we went with so that's actually kind of funny because it feels like you're going from make you know making your first omelet to like making a French omelet at this point, right? Like there's a little bit more that's going into it. You know, you've cracked a couple eggs at this point. What what do you think is like what you're super excited about to show off? You know that you've learned even through like some of the smaller stuff that you've done. Um, you know, for me, this film, uh, uh it's cool to complete it. It's cool to get it done. It's cool because. Um, we didn't have any, you know, investors. I was the only investor. A lot of it, you know, when I say investors, a lot of it was like my time, you know, so that everything has value. Um, a lot of the people I worked with, you know, I paid them out of pocket. And so, um, you know, right. And this is not uncommon with independent filmmaking, you know, but when you do independent filmmaking, you don't have a big studio, you don't have big money, you don't have the stuff backing you. So you find your hands involved in every step of the way from, you know, I co-wrote it with a friend of mine, Melissa Godin Hunt. Um, and then I, I did all the storyboarding and stuff. I made all the special effects. I actually recruited some people, including Melissa. Um, and then you, you find yourself, you know, I'm editing it myself. I'm, I'm, I'm making the music myself. I'm doing Foley and sitting here by myself in my studio. And then uh, I just said, you know what? I took it this far. Anger Tours Productions is a label I've been throwing on like every recording I've done for the last 20 years. You know, it's just the, this joke thing that we did. I made it real a couple of years ago as an LLC. Anger Tours Productions is my company. And um, and uh, I said, you know what? I mean, I might as well just distribute it ourselves as well. So I looked into how to do all that stuff, which wasn't easy to kind of find all the right information, but went, went through it all. And what I'm proud of is saying that me and the people that do work with me um, my hands and our hands were on every step of this process all the way to the beginning and to the end. It's finally, it's going to be out. It's going to be out on Amazon, iTunes, Apple TV. So it's cool that that's been the kind of goal. It's like, oh, would it be cool if we had a movie on Amazon? You know, and so here we are. So How I'm, does I'm, that movie on Amazon? <laughs> yeah. But or not, or people love it or not, I mean, I don't really know, you know. I mean, But either way, you know, no one can say that we didn't try and didn't do it. And uh, I always say we MacGyvered a movie. This is, this is my, I had bubble gum and toothpicks and someone said, Hey, can you make like a car? You know what I mean? And <laughs> That's the most it. indie horror shit, man. Is like, and like you're talking about, you know, you're wearing so many hats, especially when like at the end of the day, like, yes, everyone that was a part of this is what brought this project together, but it is your project 
So yeah. you wind up wearing, like, like you're saying, you're doing the editing, you're doing the directing and luckily you're a drummer. So doing the, doing the editing, you probably, like I was talking to uh, Anthony de Blasi a couple of weeks ago and he's talking about, you know, how drummers kind of had that cadence in filmmaking a lot. So I feel like that's probably where a lot of that sharp cut is going to come in, in this film, which I'm really excited about. Well, um, I, I'm, a, I'm an all round musician. I, I, I originally, when I joined my band Freya um, back in 2004, um, I, uh, I was the bass player, but I play guitar. I sing, you know, I was in like a, a, a star search contest years ago. You know, and I didn't make it too far cause I, I ended up bailing on it, but you know, I can sing, I do all stuff. So like being able to, you know, when I'm filming, I'm, I'm aware of where music should go. And in this particular movie, um, a lot of, sometimes I let the, I let the scenes, I would let the scenes carry themselves at the talent and the actors and the story carry itself. But this particular movie, I just, I want it to be dark. So I just, every scene I'm like, I got an idea for music there. Oh, something should be there. It should be like this, you know? So, um, it was, it, you know, all that stuff, playing music for all these years, watching movies for all these years, you know, definitely helps when you're like filming and then, you know, you're going to be working on the music and you can kind of film a, a shot knowing that oh, I'm going to fill it with this. And so it definitely helps. Now, is there like a specific movie that comes to mind uh, that you kind of take like, oh, I love how the music f worked and made the movie flow like specifically that you kind of look to? Or is it since you have so much like internalized music that it's just kind of what comes out of you to make it flow? Well, the funny thing is, like, I don't typically like write or, or, or do horror movies like that's like I like sci fi thriller. I like I like I like alien type stuff. Right. But. Um, that stuff's terrifying to me. So I've always liked that, that, that like, you know, ambient kind of like droning, scary tone that you find in like an, a horror movie and stuff like that. So um, I don't know if I could say one particular, um, just because, you know, my brain, when, when people ask me these questions, as we call the specific thing, my brain turns to the motion. I'm like, ah, um, <laughs> but, but, you know, I just always like, I like that music kind of lingering, letting you know, this is not a good situation. You know, this is, this is not, I don't typically care for like band style music in a movie. Sometimes it works. Like if, you know, depending on what it is, but for the most part, I like, I like that ambient, mm -hmm. like any movie at the ambient, like maybe like uh, the alien movies or something like that. You know what I mean? Like some of those, I think those, those type of movies just have that, that, that tone, that rumble constantly going like, and you're like, it, you almost you almost forget it's there. It's almost like a fan going, right? Or like, or like, you know, you you hear like a generator going, you just forget it's there. Or water running. I would like that, like that that tone to kind of your subconscious picks up on it, whether you hear it or not. You know what I mean? You might forget it's about it. Keep that brain in that unsettling set. You know what I mean? Instead instead of like like you're saying, like it's it's ambient, but it's doing something to your brain in the background overall. I, I think so. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. Uh, so with, with you being a person that typically likes to write stuff like uh, sci fis and thr sci fi thrillers and stuff like that, what kind of brought you into doing to and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going based on what I have seen for this trailer, which guys is available on YouTube right now. Uh, what kind of drove you into this feels like a slasher to me, and I'm sure that, that I can tell that there's more mystery that comes along with that. Uh, just based on what I've seen, but what kind of drove you into this form of horror, I guess? Um, well, I originally had written like a, a little, a little story for this, like, you know, after, after COVID and all this stuff, we wanted to film and I was planning on doing a union project and all this stuff. And obviously no need to talk about, you know, 2020, um, the year that know, wasn't the bullshit that kind of came with that. But uh, you know, you kind of you, you kind of had to rethink how you did things. You know, there's a lot of weird things going on. So when I, you know, I talked to my DP and I said, well, we're not going to be able to film. You know, we got to wait and see what's happening. I, I don't have the money to pay for all this new stuff. He, he said, well, let's do an indie film. Let's do a horror film. And so we started talking about it. And he's like, he's like, two actors, two locations. That's it. He kept saying this stuff. Is that's John Soviet Soviet Media. And um, and I was like, well, I was like, you know, I mean, my story is usually bigger. I have way more dialogue and all this stuff. So I started thinking about I'm like, well, what scares me? What what do I think is creepy? You know, I wasn't like I mean, I've watched horror movies. I'm, I'm you know, I, I grew up on like night, the original Nightmare on Elm Street and, you know, Halloween and, and um, Friday the 13th and stuff. And I love Evil Dead. It's one of my all time favorites. And um, I love the series. I love everything about it. So 
Um, but I, but I love alien stuff. I love that creepy, you know, some of these situations that are creepy and, 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 you know, I, I don't really watch dramas, but my writings tend to be pretty dramatic at times. Like there's like this, Oh, this really big, like weight on certain scenes. So when I wrote Severance Mountain, um, originally I, I wrote it, um, I wanted to feel like helpless. I just, I didn't want to have like those happy parts. And at the time, I mean, during COVID, I mean, really, there was a lot of like down feelings during that time. Like you felt like, holy shit, I can't believe we're here. Like sometimes there wasn't a lot of happy feelings. So it might have influenced like the way I was filming, the way I was thinking. But I didn't want it to be like this happy everybody kisses and oh someone's gonna right. win. And I wanted to feel like um impending doom and every turn got just a little worse and everything that happened got a little worse. So I don't know if it feels so much like a slasher more than it feels um disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a little more depravity to it yeah yeah when you watch if you know and it depends on who's whose lens you're looking through if you're looking through you know um my my killer um i think like it's his it's his story so like if you if you look at it through that um you're gonna find that um it's actually a pretty good day for that person and uh, <laughs> pretty high it depends on what kind of demented view you want to look at it through so <laughs> that that's incredible uh there so and actually that's one of my favorite parts always about horrors i think there's all like such a unique aspect of the storytelling where it's like you're saying there's not always a happy ending like it's not everybody sits at the campfire at the end you know half your friends are fucking dead if not all of you are dead yeah, you know, this isn't like John Wick gets shot 30 times and he's still crawling around fighting for like eight movies and like, you know, it's really just one continuation, you know, losing fingers and limbs. This is more like, um, you know, if you're at a bar and you see someone get into a fight and then you're like, oh, you know, oh, whatever, come on, Johnny, stop fighting. And then they punch somebody and they knock him down and that person's on the ground. Then they go to kick him again. You're like, whoa, whoa, it starts to feel weird. Like he's down, leave him alone. And my <laughs> Kind of like feeling like you don't want to see someone get murdered. You don't want to see your buddy like kick the shit out of someone who's already down. And to me, it kind of, I was kind of go, trying to pull on those kind of heartstrings where like the situations could just stop, but they don't. And um, some of the situations just, you just don't want to happen. And so, you know, I think writing the way I do, um, it's not a typical horror movie, but it's, it's definitely gory and disturbing. It got some really messed up situations. And I think people are just going to be like, oh, what the? <laughs> you know, I, I don't have people, I'm like, okay, so that's the end of my movie. What do you guys think? I would just kind of turns back slow, and I could just tell there's a weird, like, like, like this feeling in the air. And they're like, dude, that was that was fucked up, man. And I'm like, I'm like, that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to be like everything else. I want, I wanted you to leave feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that people leave feeling like nothing good happened. Nothing good. <laughs> nothing. Like, wasn't even a good sandwich eating you know what i mean like there it nothing good happened like i want it to be like it just feels like every step is one step down you're like oh shit this is bad even the sandwich was open-faced <laughs> like... oh, it's my story and you'll see you'll see that's that's super exciting uh and, and i i'm really excited because I, I love movies like that because again like like i said i just don't think that it always has to have a happy ending um, so I, I'm very excited to see what you got going on for this. Now, one of the tags that I noticed, uh, on this was, uh, body horror. Uh, so I'm kind of curious, uh, who, who was your special effects? Was there anything that you guys were like super proud of? Obviously you don't have to like explain the kill or anything like that, but was there anything that you were really proud of in this movie for that aspect of it? I mean, I take pride in the special effects. I'm, made i made all the special effects i mean oh wow scratch. so you're wearing every fucking hat right now man <laughs> well, you know i when it, when it when when it said and i'm doing these interviews i'm trying to be a little more crafty about how i respond to that because yeah i did a lot and i, and I did i did make the special effects but i mean people helped me along the way with a lot of things um but i did i you know when i needed like for example if i needed like a hand or something right i would order some generic like spirit type fake ass looking hand but then i would take it i'd take it all apart take all the guts out and then i'd restuff it i'd make it look a little more realistic because some of them actually have all the right wrinkles and stuff but they just it's a decent mold that looks generic so then i would like get those lee press on nails and i'd put the nails on it and then i would i would repaint the skin to look right and i'd put dirt under the nails and then i would like 
I would start to make it look more. I'd put wire in if I had to to make the hand be able to turn properly. And then I would like where the limb would, would be. I would like I I I'd like do some art stuff like spray foam and all sorts of stuff. Make bones come out and meat. And I would just I'm an artist. I own a tattoo shop, so I would just be like painting it like meticulously and making it look like um just like a gory cut off um limb like and it, it just it's just modifying some things i got some things i had to make from scratch some things you know i would have to take something and, and literally just okay what am i doing here so um just being an artist kind of helped me do that so i i take it like when you wrote the script and you had you know the ideas for the kills and stuff like that so with you deciding that you were going to do you know the special effects for this uh i take it you weren't letting yourself be limited at all like you said you're kind of like learning a little bit as you go uh but was everything just like i'm gonna fucking master this i know exactly what i want i know what i want so i know how i need to figure it out to make that happen well i write like so any script i write even the ones i have that are more elaborate more intense i'm always i'm out when i'm writing my stories because i want i want to i don't want to sell my stories i want to direct them and I don't want to realize everything's practical effects. There, there are a couple things that are like um, where we had a mishap with a piece of equipment and like you could see where something came apart from like this, this body. And uh, I had to put it back and then I only have one of them and it was bleeding and all this crazy shit happened. So I have this guy in the Ukraine who took it and he could like smooth it out. For example, if I had like a part where a hand and a wrist and you could see the seam, he would, he would go through every scene and just smooth it out. So it looked real. And then like, he would if, like, and it, he maybe might add a little blood there, but it, it, it was only one scene and it was so minor to to because we only had one shot at this particular scene. But everything else in my movie is practical. The blood's it's flying as we're throwing blood, you know, the body, the parts you see, like we're like somehow figuring out a way to wave it in front of the camera or whatever the scene calls for. Um, and that and, and that's that's just how I so when I write. I write thinking in a head. I said, okay, so how can I do this? This person's going to get their head cut off. How am I going to make their head cut off? You know, <laughs> their head cut off. But, um, um, can you still hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my battery flashed. Um, so, um, the way I do it is, uh, I'm thinking, okay, I want this to happen. How can I pull it off? And I'll think for a minute. I'll think, okay, if I do this, 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 okay, I can pull that off. So then I'll finish writing my scene knowing that I can, I can, I can work with that practically. Um, and I just do that with every movie that I've ever written, every script I've ever written, even the ones that have, I have some that are, um, I had a line producer come up with a budget for me that have bigger, you know, elaborate effects. And, um, I still do it. So I think I could definitely pull this off with a camera in this position. If I did this to this car, if I did this to this body part. So everything is, is, is it's thought out. It's thought I was being, and being in control of it, knowing that I'm, I'm responsible for that stuff, like making the props. Um, I'm always paying attention as I'm writing to make sure that I could pull this off and have it be believable. Like I'm seeing the shot in my head. I'm like, wait, what angle would this be? And how can I make that real? How can I do this in one shot? You know? <laughs> so that's always, always on my mind. So are you doing the cinematography for this as well? Or is this just like you see it and then you're translating it to your cinematographer? So I, I do, um, I, I write all my storyboards and I have a cinematographer, John Sobey from Sobe's Media. And uh, me and him worked on almost all my projects that I've had in the last like 10 years, you know, eight years. He's done with me all my proofs of concepts, all my little things I've done. And um, so he's with me. So he has a pretty good idea of what I want. But I sent him all my storyboards in advance. Like, and I have, um, I, I have like this app I use now where I can like put models in there. I can use his camera, his lens, and I can lift it six inches lower. I can, I can widen the shot. And so I have a really good grasp on like, what I'm going to try to do. And then I can actually place the camera in these models. Um, so I can pull it in, pull it out, you know, um, and say, okay, yeah, 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 that's cool. And you know, you end up changing things on the way, but, um, um, he is taking my vision with those, with those papers and those templates and then I'm just sitting with them. And I, I usually, they, they have like an app now where you can put it right on your phone so I can see what he's shooting. So I'll stand back sometimes. We'll work it all out and I'll stand back and I'll watch it like I'm watching the movie on my phone. I'll say, hey, we need to tweak this or tweak that. Keep in mind, limited resources, man. There's, you know, if, if you're watching the movie and you're like, oh, why didn't they do that? Or why did they do that? I'm like, well, because I didn't have the equipment to do that. And we we're being creative and trying to make it work for this super low budget. So 
there are things that we couldn't do. And I'm saying this like we had every resource in the world, but you know, indie filmmaking, man, you're on your toes and you got to be creative and you know, you got to pick and choose your battles. So I'm a lot of it's prep, you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. What What do you think? Uh, because you know, obviously, other than money, what What do you think is the biggest thing that you had to overcome making this film? Um. Well, I think it It'd be nice in the future to have more people on the the po You know, the post end. Um. And obviously, you know, um. You know, I'm doing. I'm reviewing all the footage that I'm editing, and then you know, there was. It took two and a half half years for us to get this thing out because we filmed the movie was done and uh i started watching some of the footage i'm like oh man that scene doesn't look that good or oh shit you know like we should redo that or we could have done that better or and because we don't have the ability to watch it right then and there on set which you know a lot of movies you can do that if you're questioning a scene um um we had to wait till next year because like by this point it's october november Snow is already starting to hit. We're in northern New York. So snow would hit. The weather changed in the area we filmed that didn't look the same. So it was like, shit. So like, then I'm waiting until like, you know, March, April, May. I'm like, oh, please just let the trees blo bloom now and let's get back. <laughs> there. Throw your beard back or, hey, you know, let's let's see if we can get this location. And some things we had to wait for locations to be available again. So it's just, you know, that that was the hard part where like, I think, you know, if we did have a bigger budget, if we did have a little more, more um, people on set to review footage as we're going, say, hey, man, that, sh that scene was botched. Hey, you should come check this out. I could walk off during lunch and check it out. I think those things would have really made a huge difference on, you know, on, on, on the timeline and just being more efficient. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had just uh, actually edited my first short film and like the post on that was insane and we're trying to make like 10 minutes worth of footage like i couldn't imagine the amount that you're trying to edit for yeah this is about 90 minutes correct yeah what's your what's your short film what was your short film what's it about oh, so uh it's called ember uh it was a it was funny because it was actually a joke uh because i had hit writer's block i was writing a book uh for a while and uh, I was like writing another book. I wanted to keep the juices flowing, but n writing another book sounded like suicide. So I decided that I was going to just write some short stories. And obviously horror is something that I know a lot about. And I had wrote out about six or seven different uh, prompts and premises. And I was like, I'll just turn this into like, you know, some form of scary stories to tell in the dark for adults kind of thing and kind of add like a little more depravity and a little bit more fun to it. Um, and the the prompt that I cared about the least, I had come up to a buddy of mine and he's an actor and producer and director and all that. And he was like, have you ever thought about writing a script? And I was like, I've never really thought about it. Now I've written, like now I have like some in the bank at this point. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was called Ember because the joke was it was Tinder. Uh, and the premise of it was uh, that you would have uh, two people that were and it. I could not believe I was writing a meek. Like, I just couldn't believe that somebody fucking convinced me to do that. And uh, the premise of it is the guy, the girl gets up from the table. The guy goes to roofie her. And then as it turns out, you can, in fact, not roofie a vampire. <laughs> so it's just a nice little bait and switch uh, tale that we just finished up recently. So I'm excited to start sending it off to film fests and shit like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, film festivals. It's it's definitely um, it's a roller coaster. Film festivals are they they kind of get you that you get wrapped up in it and stuff, and it it feels there's a lot of excitement, a lot of waiting and stuff. And we actually did win a couple of awards for my film. I know it looked like y'all did pretty well in the circuit. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't enter in a whole lot of festivals. I put it in like ten or fifteen or something like that, and we and we got like recognition from a couple. Like th I think three. We won one and, and we did something, but it, and so it was really cool. You know what I mean? But the, the, the film, the film, the film festival circuit is, um, it's tough, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. It's heartbreaking. It's stressful. You're like sitting there at home. It's like, it's like having a lottery ticket. Look at the numbers. Oh <laughs> shit. We, oh fuck. We didn't get it. It's got, it's got that kind of like feeling like, you know, um, um, but yeah, dude, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You made a film. It's I, I 
I think everybody should be making movies. Well, I don't think everybody should be making movies because it takes away from everybody else. But yeah, so I, I, think I think everybody should be doing it. But <laughs> love it. I love it, man. I love I love writing. I love making shit. So that's cool. It's cool you did it. It's cool you're doing it. Appreciate that. Um, I am curious because uh, I feel like a lot of times, and I'm sure uh you know doing the film festival circuit thing definitely benefits when you're like actually because you're self-distributing like you were talking about um but you're not going to like gravitas or uh raven or anything like that so it's like do, when you are like distributing to these uh companies um for streaming do you actually uh how like does it matter with the film festival stuff or is that more so like they just watch it and if they want to they will put it on your streaming service because i have no idea what the distribution side of this stuff really looks like other than like you know people talking about mgms and like needing uh big names to do stuff for distribution companies and stuff like that i mean my experience i mean i've been in bands for years i was on victory records for years and we're on a record label right now. And, 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 you know, I, I got some insight on that kind of business and I, and when it comes to film, um, you know, it all comes down to like money. You know, I think something that you have, that's marketable. If someone thinks they can make money off it, then they're willing to kind of put their, you know, put their time into it and stuff. Sometimes things aren't marketable right at the bat. Sometimes it might take someone like me to do what I'm doing. And if people all of a sudden start like, you, know, you, you might see, uh, you might see people, like you know like these companies say oh my god this maniac made a movie and he released it himself and he's making some real waves we should contact them so you never really know you know it, it could change at any point in time so i just felt like um being so low on the totem pole um feeling um confident in my in my ability to do research and, and my my motivation to do just do stuff like this um, in the years of just being a road dog in my band and, and touring and, and being on labels and traveling all over the world, doing crazy, crazy shit, um, it didn't feel so scary to me. It was unknown. It was hard. It wasn't easy. And there was definitely some money involved. But um, when I learned um, kind of the ropes and where and how a lot of these companies, you know, where they go and who helps them put stuff out there it wasn't quite as scary it just came it came down to like money how much you want to spend like advertising how much you want to spend you mm -hmm. know what i mean I, stuff out there you know if, if i had the money to put us on every dorito bag i bet you my movie would be a success you know if i had the money to <laughs> a movie on a, on a pepsi can or a coke can right you know if you can buy these contracts which you can't i mean i can't you know um and being independent you know it that's all that's what it all comes down to you know we we partnered up with um, a beard company called Copper Johns and they, they do like beard oils and butters and soaps and all sorts of stuff. And I think they do more care, like skincare products and stuff. And uh, we're actually doing a beard oil for Severance Mountain. I can't remember. I, I, I came up with a template. I kept saying, oh, I should be called Mountain Man Beard Juice or something like that. Right. And I, I <laughs> but, but um, we're doing this collab with them. And so any, anything you can get like that, I think, is really just going to get it out there. But doing the other stuff is is more just there's a lot of like, OK, well, you need this kind of artwork. OK, your film has to be in this format. OK, uh, you have a dead spot in this. But you're constantly going back and forth, fixing, tweaking, fixing, tweaking. So it's just a lot. You know what I mean? To do it. But I think now that I'm sitting here, my movie comes out in like two and a half, three weeks, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I put all the work in. We did all the right things. I met I, I, I went to companies. You know, uh, my audio is done really well. We did all the audio ourselves, and then we sent it out to um, Subcat Studios out of Syracuse, and it's all 5.1 surround. Um, my color correction was done by John Sov at Sov's Media. He's worked with Gravitas. He's done a couple things on there, like the perfect bid. Um, uh, he did um, – um, he had something to do with Potty Town. He had something to do with um, – another 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 movie but he's done videos for Wiz Khalifa so I have these people that I'm working with that have experience um and and do these things so it's just it's just making sure you have the right people in the right positions where you don't like you can you can fake a lot I can make a leg you know I can make like <laughs> a, a blood and I can I can make guts you know but some of these things that everybody's going to see you got to make sure you have the right people like color correction. I can color correct. It might look cool to me, but it might not be right. There's like all these codes and things. So um, 
So having all that stuff in place, when you go to these distribution companies and these, and these aggregators and these people that release things for you, um, that's the scary part. It does cost money. So it's, I'm going to find out pretty soon if not using a distribution company was smart or not. Cause my wife might be pretty pissed at me soon. She might be like, that was stupid. You know? So I, I know it's going to happen, but, um, I, I mean, I think I got it kind of figured out. We'll find out. You know what I mean? Maybe I might be a distribution company after this. You know what I mean? So I'll say that's I one less hand in the pot. So it's got to be at least semi positive. You know what I mean? Well, the good news is like, you know, there's some places where you, no matter what you have to spend money. Um, so, you know, you know, going to Amazon, for example, they're, they're, they're th- they have a percentage. They take what they take their percentage and that's the deal you make. You want on Amazon, that's what you got to do. But once you jump through all the hoops, once you get your movie in the right format, once you get it looking good, once it meets all the specs and you have all your artwork meeting all the specs and everything looks good. Um, at that point, um, I mean, it's expensive. It costs money. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. But once you get there, now it's on. Now it's on Amazon. I can tell you and, you know, your people, whoever is watching you, or I, I can go to YouTube or anywhere. I, I can go to the mall. I can scream, hey, man, I made a movie. And there's a chance that these people can watch it. Now, instead of that going to some distribution company and them saying, oh, yeah, we didn't make any money or, oh, it didn't really make what you want. And, you know, maybe it's true. Maybe it didn't. By having less hands hands in the pot it doesn't need to make quite as much to be successful for me it could be a considered failure um um but um but if uh but if it but if it if it just meets some mediocre numbers it could be really a game changer for me and my company and it could be enough for us to do another movie independently even better you know what i mean it can be enough for us to be like a legitimate company if we if we reach enough people um so it's worth the risk you know what i mean the reward could be great and it wouldn't be i'm I'm not winning the championship at this one i'm just i'm just i'm just getting myself known and my people known the people that work with me known so you know i mean I'm, i'm hoping for the best i'm hoping that enough people watch it to where it was worth it and then I can do it again and, and, and spend more next time and make it a little bit bigger. And it might take a little longer, but like we have control over our own product and that's pretty cool. And something else that's really fucking cool, man, is just the concept that like somebody could be sitting on, on their couch watching your movie, having a good time. And that's really fucking cool. That's really fucking cool. It is. It's going to be on Amazon. I think there's 160 million people that have Amazon, right? And so my mo- you you know my movie won't be bumped to the top, but it's going to be a new release during Halloween. Um, and there are there is a market for independent films, um, and uh, horror films especially during that time. It comes out sept- Friday, September 13th. So my thought process is someone's going to skim across it. They're going to find this. Oh, and for the record, my trailer doesn't really show anything. I don't, I don't, I, I, it's really a vague trailer. I don't show any of my blood. I don't show any of my, any of my cool special effects. So you, you're going to get it in the movie, which is cool. I, I hate it when a movie reveals everything. So yeah, I'm hoping, 100%. I'm hoping that the trailer is intriguing enough to where these people are going to say, what is this? What is this movie? Who's that guy? And who are these people? You know, but they, it looks, it might, it, I think it looks really good. I think the movie, the quality, you know, we spent time making it look really good and i hope that they um they they're intrigued and i hope that enough people decide to watch it and i hope at the end when they when they're feeling weird and i think what the fuck did we just watch this is weird <laughs> oh my sister to watch it she'll get all grossed out by this or you know i'm hoping that people like decide to share it because it isn't like anything else it's an indie film that like almost looks too good to be an indie film in some ways just just you know just based on my cinematography and uh, it's just got a really cool, weird, disturbing vibe. And I love it. <laughs> I just lo- I love the idea that people are going to sit in their like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't attest the fact that it does, like, just from watching the trailer, like, it does look good. Like, the camera quality is really good and the color grading. Uh, there's actually one scene in particular um, in the trailer where you see the two cops are talking and then the sergeant pulls up and like, even just the color grading that is in the forest when they're having that convert, like, you know, bits and pieces of a conversation, not like a full on uh, dialogue or anything. I was like, this looks really good actually. Like, and, and I love indie horror films. I really do. And one of the things that gets me with some of them is really camera quality. Cause it's like, you know, when, when you used to say the term indie film, 
uh, back in, you know, early 2000s, it's like, oh, this was shot on a camcorder. You know what I mean? And like it and it's rough, but that's not the case anymore. I think the accessibility is so different. Well, they're making like consumer like professional cameras now, you know, like that that 4K that just have the right, you know, the right film rates and stuff. I, I don't I don't pretend to pay attention to the text. I, and people say you should, you should, you should. But my boys, John Sovi at Sov's Media, the guy is like a genius when it comes to this stuff. Um, he just knows so much about this. And I just I, I say, so what how do I make it look like that movie? And he says, <laughs> what we do? can you do it? He's like, yeah, it's going to cost us. OK, let's do it. I don't care. Right. Don't don't tell me the details. Just just I want to know that you can do it. Then he his, that's what he does. He, he just he's just make. We spend so much time getting the lighting, and all the dude does is study films. And at night, when his family goes to bed, he sits in his basement, like like filming like things. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. getting the fog right, getting like the lighting right. So then when we come to the site, he's like, get yeah, check this out, and then we'll film something. And I'm like, it's really we have our indie film moments and there are some shots where I'm like, you know, maybe we could have spent more time, but we didn't have a lot of money. So there were things we had to get through, but like, but some of the shit we got right, man, some of the shots in this film that we like, we captured, I'm like, dude, that's like, that's like memorable cinema right there. Like that. And some of the, involved with some of those shots, I'm like, dude, I'm like, that's our movie. And, and it wouldn't look that way if it wasn't for Sov's media and John Sovi, you know, um, it, it takes, it takes, it, it it's, a lot of ingredients, man. You know, it's, you know, him, he could film all day in his basement and it would look great. But if he wasn't telling the right story, maybe it might not be as cool. Maybe if I was filming the same story with a different camera and someone else, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, project the same. So I think it's really all those elements of lining up and being like, okay, you know, I love that it's an indie film. I think it looks, I think it looks better than an indie film due to John Sobey. And I think just, and I think we pulled something really, cool and unique off and i think in a world where like everything is just so like this is the formula this is how we have to have it laid out this is what we do we brought we didn't do that um and so i hope that people get it and i think that like when they watch it i like I, you know once they to me i always tell people the 25 minute mark yeah. the first half is cool <laughs> it's building the story right it's going in this direction it's going good and right right around my, my favorite we're right from 25 minutes on i feel like the movie just takes this weird like dark turn I, I, you know i i think eternal sunshine for the spotless mind oh that yeah, movie, yeah i remember when i watched that's the that, that's the jim carrey movie yeah. right mm-hmm. actually remember, probably one of his best movies it was just so weird right yeah. it had weird clothes it was disturbing but like it just it made you feel weird that's what i wanted to in a horror way <laughs> but you know what i mean absolutely uh that's- oh sorry go ahead no, as I said, that's what I wanted out of it. Absolutely. Um, I have one more question about the movie before we uh, go to a couple more things before we get off here. Uh, I I really uh, appreciate your enthusiasm for being a writer, and I can tell how much passion you really feel about it because I, I can I can see that like what you're most excited for for this movie, uh, aside from a lot of the stuff that we've talked about so far, is just telling the story to people, the story that's been in your head, the story that's kind of alive. And I know for myself personally, when I'm writing, uh, I and I think a lot of people do, uh, is there a particular character in this film that we should keep an eye on because you had so much fun writing that particular character? Um, I mean, I like I like a few of them, but um, I mean, I'm team killer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think depending on what lens you look through, um, the story might feel like this or it's here, it's there, it's there, whatever. But like, you know, I mean, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of from the I personally think it's the killer story. That's my that that's that I think I think if you watch it through his lens and through his fucked up world and all the weird shit that goes on around, it might seem like all these this tragedy and all this weird stuff. But I mean, I feel like it's a pretty good day in his, in his life. I feel like, I feel like he's on a, I think he's on a high. I feel like he's, he's having, he's having, having a good day. Hell yeah. You, you love to see it. Um, so guys, make sure you're checking out Severance Mountain on Friday the 13th, uh, this September coming at you. Uh, Amazon. I think I also saw Google play as well. Correct. 
Yeah, Google Play, and I think YouTube's connected to that. It'll be for rent or purchase on all of those platforms, Apple TV, iTunes. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, so we got a couple uh, quick fire questions for you just because I'm curious. Um, so uh, when I was talking to your buddy who, you know, hooked us up uh, mutually for this interview, um, now I now I get why you have somebody reaching out, because how the fuck do you have time to do all the stuff that you do? Like between being on tour, owning a, a, a production company, owning a tattoo shop, like ma making all like writing, do like, how do you make time for all of these projects? Well, I mean, I'm late sometimes, as you can tell. I wasn't going to bring it up. They don't know. But now if you want to out yourself, that's fine. <laughs> well, I was actually at a meeting. I own, I own a couple restaurants too. Me and my wife do. So we were doing, we had a meeting for that. So I'm, I'm just, I, I, my friends asked me, how do you do this shit? But, um, um, I don't, man. I just, I don't really sleep much. I'm just, I just, I'm just constantly going. I'm a, I'm, I'm a big, uh, the clock's ticking type of guy. And I got so much in my head and like, you know, if I'm sitting there watching a movie, I'm like, I'm wasting time right now. What the fuck am I doing? You know, um, I'll be I'm just constantly going. I'm just constantly um, creating, creating, creating. Like I'm going on. I'm going to be in. Uh, where Where are you out of, by the way? Uh, we're out of North Carolina. We're in the triad. I'm actually practicing in North Carolina Thursday night with my band. No, I don't shit. know. I don't know where we we have practice. And then we're um, we're playing at this place called Muddy Roots Festival in um knoxville tennessee i and love then we're knoxville i love yeah, knoxville playing, uh, it's called muddy roots with my band and then the day after we're playing in kentucky then i'm driving back home for a few days sending my kids off to school for their first day of school then i'm coming then i'm going back on the road i'm i start in queens and then we're doing a whole northeast all the way out to fargo but my movie comes out during that time so i have a i have a i have a nice suburban that i put some car wrap on that's advertising my movie that's right. got a big so when i'm driving from show to show i'm kind of cross promoting and then i bring my laptop on the road with me and i'm just at night when i'm done playing and stuff i take a shower i lay there and i'll just i start typing i'm writing and stuff i'm talking to the record label um actually i'm getting emails as i'm talking to you i'm doing these radio ads for this for our band and stuff the guy keeps having me record these little things and uh I'm so I I listened to back to one and I was like shit man I should I think I should do like DJ shit I think my voice sounds kind of cool like I should be like now in ninety five X I need one more feather in my hat right now <laughs> can't stop dude I can't stop that's awesome though I mean like that's that's the motivation we're looking for man uh, also while you're in Knoxville definitely check out curious dog big shout outs to them we went to be in tory jones's film in kentucky uh boy from below and on the way uh we had driven through knoxville and it was like one of the best cities that i've ever fucking been to uh, so definitely check out the, f the food there next level I've, i'm assuming you've probably already been honestly i might not be telling you anything new um but I have I haven't been there before. Um, I can't remember if I've been. Th I, we went. I think we went through Knoxville or someplace down by there during the snowstorm. There was like a. Remember uh, in January there was like a, everything shut down. Like we were on oh, tour, yeah. and we were chasing that big snowstorm, and we were in like, like I don't even remember where the hell we were, but like I, I, me I remember there was like a very light uh, glaze on the ground, and people were panicking. And I'm from Northern New York, so I'm like we get like feet of snow up here and so i'm like like stores were closed i'm like shit we can't even get like food right now and our hotel people are standing shivering in the hallway and i'm like holy shit and so we my time down through there was kind of like it was kind of chaotic i think a waffle house was open <laughs> hell yeah it was <laughs> they're like we're not going to a waffle house I'm like all right fuck it i would go anywhere that is warm and has food look <laughs> yeah. i mean i don't know well, speaking of food, one of the questions that I will ask on the honorary behalf of my co-host, you couldn't make it tonight. Uh, Eric loves to ask, uh, especially for someone like yourself, who's well-traveled and been on tour. Uh, what goes on your pizza, man? Dude, that, you know, that this is a, this is a argument with people. I'm a cheese guy, dude. Like I believe, I, I think pizza is just cheese. It's just sauce and cheese. Like I'm, I'm like a, I'm like, <laughs> like my, Everybody around my son's trying. He's like, Yeah, we should try pineapple and uh black olives. Like, that's what Deadpool does. I'm like, fuck that. I don't want that shit. That sounds horrible. I'm like, <laughs> I barely want pepperoni on there. You know what I mean? I'm like, there's too much shit on there, it takes away. I want a good 
New York style crust or like a Sicilian, like what a dull, airy and bubbly and oh, crusty. Yeah, yeah. I like a light cheat. I like a light sauce and I like the sweet sauce. I'm a sweet sauce guy. I'm not a big into the spicy sauce and just heavy on the cheese, man. You, you cook that a little too much on a little on the dark side, a little crispy. And man, I'll tell you, and so, it can't be from the hut. It can't be little season. <laughs> can't be Domino's. Fuck that shit. No fucking has to be New York style or like a Sicilian type pizza, something, something good. I actually like Chicago pizza, deep dish, like where they have like the the Detroit pizza or something like that too. I think I saw fucking like cheese pie. <laughs> I'm full right now, and you're making me hungry. <laughs> See, I, I here's my thing: is like I I respect people. That, and here's the, here's the other thing: I've never had real New York pizza. I've been to New York. Uh, and had a couple cannolis, but I never had like the true pizza experience up there. So for me, when I see a slice of cheese pizza, I don't get excited because I just assume that that should already be on there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it, yeah. But to- nah, dude, I'm a I'm a pizza I'm a pizza maniac, dude. Like I, I fuck. I, I mean, I got. I mean, I don't know if you can see my tattoo, but I got oh, a that's UFO. Sick. Got a UFO right there, and. I- <laughs> piece of cheese cheese pizza just to kind of you see that there's no pepperoni there's nothing on it. it's just drippy cheese just yeah i got a cheeseburger too i got a cheeseburger i'm a fat kid i like food what can i say <laughs> so, oh, this is right under the tribal tribal stripes i love that <laughs> my pizza first because i would have said what's on that pizza motherfucker cheese <laughs> But yeah, there's something about New York thin crust, like thin style pizza. It's crunchy, it's gooey, it's stretchy, and oh, dude, sweet. Oh my god. So where do you get it? Where where's when I go next? Because I'll be taking my partner to New York to Broadway here in the next year or so. Where where do we get pizza? You know, I I don't. I only visit New York. I'm the same as you. I go through it. I'm like, holy shit. And up here, there's like these random oddball kind of like. There's a place called Cam's that does a really great New York pizza. Um, there's a place up here called Chicks that does uh, a great like, like Sicilian style pizza. Oh, um, you're in Atlanta, right? No, I'm north. I'm way northern New York. I'm oh, like Canadian. okay, gotcha. Further north, like I can see Canada from from my. T- actually, me personally, I'm actually in the. I'm in the country. I live on. I there's Amish around me. I I lived in Syracuse for years. That's how I hooked up with my band. But I have like 17 acres up here. I'm like in the middle of I, Amish buggies drive by. If, if I was not in my studio, you'd hear them clacking by and you'd hear crickets. My buddy's up from the city. He's like, why do I always hear crickets? Like every fucking time I call you, I'm like, I live in the middle of fucking nowhere, dude. Like, like I literally, my road just got paved five years ago. I just got internet. We had fucking HughesNet, like some satellite internet till about <laughs> a year and a half. Just. And we got some sort of weird grant up here, so I have FiOS now, so I have the, the fastest fucking internet. So, um, yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere, dude. Dude, those satellites too—they look like fucking uh, like ray guns out of the '80s in a sci-fi film. Those things are fucking crazy. Um, but we we are running out of time. But I would love to know what's coming next. Uh, what would you like to push? What's what's going on in Ethan's brain? Um, that's funny. That's my email, Ethan's Brains at oh, Yahoo.com. Nailed it. Other thing. Um, <laughs> I'm writing. I got a few things. I got a, I got a script I'm working on right now. It's like my Goonies meets ET type script. Um, that that one's almost done. I've got a couple other ones. I got like a Quentin Tarantino style, like kind of tough guy, like ex the cop, kind of like trying to save his daughter's script. I got another one about these aliens that live in a cave up in the mountains. And uh, I have a few other ones that are ready to go. So I'm just kind of, I'm waiting to see how this goes because I've already kind of in my mind written another part to it. And then if people like are interested enough and I can get a budget for it, maybe get a, a, a bigger studio to get involved, then maybe then I, then I have an, I have a concept for a part two to this, this movie. But um, for the most part, man, I'm just, I'm just really trying to plug this and push this one. Um, and trying to get it out there and, and see what kind of buzz we can create. Either people are going to like it or not. It's an indie film. And, uh, I, you know, I think there's a market for it. I think there's an audience for it. And I think people are going to appreciate the odd flow and weirdness of what it is because it's different. And I, and I, that, that's ultimately what I want. I want something different. Uh, um, just push my band and that's the deal. Hashtag I survived Severance Mountain. If you think about it. <laughs> 
Hell yeah, that's incredible. I know I'm personally really excited, uh, especially after this conversation. I'm I, and I love indie filmmaking because I really kind of hate what uh, horror has become in the uh, the grand spectrum of like big studios and stuff like that. Like I'm just tired of the storylines that don't have any soul and just putting me a goth in anything that fucking moves at this point. Uh, dude, my killer. He doesn't wear a mask. The dude is a wicked good friend of mine, and 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 he is just a creepy fucking guy. When as this killer, you look into his eyes, and I love it. I love the realness of it. I love it. it's not a hollow mask. It's a dude, and you're looking at him, and he just, man, he's he's creepy as fuck, and he's he's a big six foot fucking four dude. Like it, it's 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 exciting, dude. I can't. I told him I said, dude, when this comes out, if it goes, man, you know, you might you might be fucking famous after this. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm dreaming. I'm a dreamer, so I always think big. But I said, in in certain circles, people, he's going to be the killer. He he could be the Jason. He could be the Freddy Krueger. Like it's going to be his face. So yeah, and back yeah. this night, Rail on Elm Street was an indie film. You know? Yeah, that's how these guys get their start. Um, but congratulations on it. And guys, again, September 13th, it's Friday the 13th. It is that easy to remember. Pick up pick up Severance Film. Again, you can get that on Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Apple TV, all that fun stuff. And actually, uh, just so you guys know, Apple TV, you don't actually have to have a sign-in anymore to buy these movies because I learned that with Exposure recently. Um, cool. So make sure that you guys are supporting indie horror films and supporting Freya on fucking tour. Uh, yep. You can check them out in Knoxville, I heard, and uh, in Kentucky as well. 30th, we're playing Knoxville at Muddy Roots. Muddy Roots, Muddy Roots. So get your asses out there. Um, but Ethan, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, you've been an incredible guest and I'm so excited to see your movie, man. I'm I'm pumped and I appreciate the love, man. And thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you guys for joining us once again, where it creaks, it cracks, and we laugh at the creatures that go bump in the night. Good night, everybody. Peace.